I find it an honor to be among you as the oldest member <laughs> until now, because I believe that old is the new young. I don't want to ruin the atmosphere with the story about war, but I think it might be very apropos considering what's going on today. As I say, my name is Monica Van Rijn, but I was born as Monica Franken. I was Dutch-born in Amsterdam, and we emigrated to the United States when I was a baby. Before I continue, I want to show you a small trailer which I made to illustrate what was going on back then and to then, later, I will tell you a nice story. You may wonder why, uh, back, going back all the way to the Holocaust to talk about war, it was 70 years ago that my sister was born, and so we are all turning 70 and haven't even spoken about what it was like to be second generation and what happened to our families. I realized this at some point because when I was uh, 40, I was still uh, denying that the war had anything to do with me. And later, as I grow older, I've discovered that almost every single decision I made in my life had something to do with something my parents t handed down to me that had a war-related item in it. There we are. In 1951, the last picture taken of the family as we moved to uh, America. And by the time I was 30, we had moved 38 times but no one told us we were refugees. We were there for opportunity. That's what we were, we were telling ourselves. My parents both are Holocaust survivors. Uh, my father, he endured torture and, and all kinds of horrible things in seven different concentration camps in Eastern and, and Western Europe. And he survived Auschwitz. And my mother, she was in nine camps. Her stories, I was allowed to talk to her, not my father about this, but her stories were pretty gruesome. And they, she had men, mentioned that the transports between the camps were actually worse. And she also survived Auschwitz. I'm collecting stories because I find that we've forgotten about storytelling. You can see tonight even how everyone is telling a story. As long as it's personal, you're interested and you're motivated and it is inspiring. So I started asking around about war stories from people, and of course I interviewed my mother, and one of the things I found is as people are getting older, don't be afraid to ask them. Even though it's a risk to ask or to tell a story, and maybe you'd want to know what those risks are, like singling out Jews again, or uh, putting yourself up for criticism. There's lots of reasons, but one of the true important things is that people do want to tell the story. And they like to tell it to someone neutral before they tell it to a family member. So when you find this card in your program, 
you might want to pass this on to someone, or if you yourself want to turn in a story to my project, I would be more than happy to put it into the installation. Now I'm going to tell you one of the stories that I heard. This is my mother at the opening of Colored by War on the 10th of December in 2015. Unfortunately, three weeks later, she died. These pictures are really very tre big treasure to me but to have them and to know that she was there and I dedicated the whole project to her and others like her, she turned 95. My mother was in Camp Fucht in, in Holland for seven months before she and 400 women were transported off to a destination unknown. Three days later, without food or any possessions, any water or toilets, they arrived filthy in a new place they had never even imagined before. They saw rows and rows of barbed wire, electrical barbed wire, and they smelled the stench of burning hair. We all know what that's like. After waiting hours in cattle cars where 400 women were crammed together, they were allowed outside and they had to undress and be naked for, for the roll call. Three days later, my mother was sentenced to death. She was standing in a large room, separated by ropes, lots and lots of prisoners in rows, and in front was a panel of people to decide what your condition was and what your destiny was. My mother was sent to the wrong side of the room, and she knew this because she looked around her and she saw people that were either elderly, sick, crippled, and she thought, oh, I shouldn't be here, this is not right. And panic started to take over. On the left-hand side of the room, she saw people busy getting tattoos, and she didn't know what that was, but she knew, that's where I have to be. But she didn't know how to get all the way to the other side of the room. Finally, suddenly, there was commotion on this side of the room. The guards, everyone turned to see what the commotion was about, and my mother saw her chance to move. Right before she ducked under the rope, she thought to herself, I can only die once. If I don't move now, I will surely never have children. You can imagine how many times I asked her to tell me how she took charge at Auschwitz. She ducked under the rope, made it out in between the rows, and didn't know how to get to where she needed to be. But when the commotion died down, somebody with a rifle, a guard, a woman guard, pushed her in her back and shoved her right into the row she was supposed to be in. She proceeded to get her tattoo, 78323, on her arm, and led out of the room. Before she left the room, she looked over her shoulder and saw a prisoner that she had left behind in the back of the room, one of the ones that was probably going to die that day, mouthing to her, I saw what you did, but nobody told on her. She went out and boarded the train to the next camp. I realize this isn't easy, but you can imagine how many stories I've heard and how many people have told me things that I realized were inspiring enough for them to continue to the will to live. We've lost our compass sometimes about decency, and this has helped me. This has really helped me. So what is the purpose of my project? The real liberation is to tell your story. Thank you.